When we think of zombies, our minds usually wander to spine-chilling horror movies or fantastical tales where lifeless beings are controlled by viruses to wreak havoc on the world. But what if I told you that zombies aren't just a product of fiction? They exist in the real world within the animal kingdom. These natural zombies are not the result of science experiments or supernatural events, but are rather victims of parasites. These tiny but ruthless invaders infiltrate their hosts, taking control of their bodies and minds for their own survival and reproduction. Get ready to uncover the grim reality of these creatures and the horrifying extent to which parasites will go to maintain their life cycles. Grasshopper, a singer silenced by streps of Terra, grasshoppers are often considered the musicians of the wild, filling the air with their rhythmic chirping. Their songs symbolize the harmony of nature. Unfortunately, these gentle creatures are not immune to nature's dark side. Enter streps of Terra, a horrifying parasitic insect. At first glance, the males of this species may resemble flies, but the females are utterly grotesque. They lack wings, legs, and even eyes, resembling nothing more than living reproductive machines. These parasitic females have one sinister goal, to find a host, and the grasshopper becomes their unfortunate target. Once the female strips of terror invades a grasshopper's body, she begins her gruesome work. Traveling through the insect's body, she settles near its head. There, she manipulates the grasshopper's behavior rendering it immobile and completely under her control. The parasite releases pheromones to attract male streps of Terra for mating. In essence, the grasshopper becomes a living puppet, entirely at the mercy of its parasitic master. But the horror doesn't stop there. After mating, the female produces eggs that hatch into larvae inside the grasshopper's body. When the larvae are ready to spread, the grasshopper is forced to regurgitate them onto flowers or plants. The helpless insect vomits its parasite-infested innards, allowing the larvae to find new hosts and perpetuate the cycle of misery. The grasshopper, once a carefree singer of nature, is reduced to a pawn in this nightmarish reproductive process. Cephalotes atrotus ants, berries of death. Ants are often admired for their industrious nature and teamwork, but the cephalotes atrotus ant has a grim story to tell found across Central and South America, as well as parts of the southern United States. This species faces a terrifying adversary, the parasite Myrmiconema neotropicum. This microscopic nematode has evolved a horrifyingly ingenious way to manipulate its host for its own benefit, transforming the ant into a walking death trap. Once the ant becomes infected, the parasite begins its insidious work. The ant's once black abdomen gradually turns a bright, unnatural red transformation so striking that it mimics the appearance of a ripe berry. But the color change is only part of the parasite's sinister plan. It also alters the ant's behavior, forcing it to wander into open, exposed areas where it is more likely to be spotted by predators. Why would the parasite make the ant so vulnerable? The answer lies in the life cycle of the parasite. Birds are its intended final hosts. When a bird spots the bright red abdomen of the infected ant, it mistakes it for a berry and devours it. Inside the bird's digestive system, the parasite reproduces and lays its eggs, which are later excreted in the bird's droppings. Other ants unknowingly consume the infected droppings, restarting the parasite's horrifying cycle. The once diligent ant becomes nothing more than a pawn in this deadly game its life sacrificed for the survival of its parasitic invader. Saxinia snails, puppets in plain sight. Deep within the forests of Costa Rica and Mexico, Saxinia snails live quiet lives beneath leaf litter, minding their own business. However, their tranquil existence can be shattered by a parasitic flatworm known as Leucochloridium paradoxum. This invader uses the snail not only as a host, but as a tool for its survival a puppet whose strings it mercilessly pulls. The story begins when a snail consumes bird droppings containing the parasite's eggs. Once inside the snail, the parasite begins to grow and take over its host's body. It doesn't stop at mere physical domination it goes after the snail's nervous system, altering its behavior in ways that are both unnatural and dangerous. The parasite forces the snail to climb out of its safe, 
shaded environment and into exposed, sunny areas where it becomes an easy target for predators. But that's not the most horrifying part. The parasite invades the snail's ocular tentacles, causing them to swell, pulsate, and resemble wriggling worms. This grotesque display is no accident it's designed to attract birds, the parasite's ultimate host. When a bird pecks at the snail's tentacles, it consumes the parasite, which then continues its life cycle inside the bird. Meanwhile, the snail, disfigured and manipulated, is left to face its grim fate. This chilling tale, a stark reminder of the lengths parasites will go to ensure their survival. European Pine Sawfly Caterpillar, Climbing Toward Doom The European Pine Sawfly Caterpillar leads a peaceful life, munching on leaves and enjoying the forest. But all that changes when it encounters the baculovirus, a parasitic invader that takes control of its body and mind. This virus is a master manipulator, capable of turning the caterpillar into a zombie-like creature that serves the parasite's sinister purposes. Once infected, the virus goes to work on the caterpillar's hormonal system. It disables the caterpillar's steroid hormones, effectively halting its growth and turning it into a mindless host. The caterpillar stops eating and becomes lethargic, moving slowly or not at all. But the virus has one final, horrifying demand, it forces the caterpillar to climb to the highest point it can find. At the peak of its climb, the caterpillar meets its gruesome end. The virus liquefies the caterpillar's body, causing it to drip onto the leaves below. These droplets are teeming with the virus, ready to infect new caterpillars and spread the cycle of death. The once vibrant caterpillar, now a lifeless husk, has unwittingly become a tool for the virus's propagation. Gypsy Moth Caterpillar Guardians of their own demise, the gypsy moth caterpillar may appear harmless, quietly going about its life among the leaves. But when it encounters the parasitic Glyptopantella's wasp, its life takes a horrifying turn. This tiny wasp has evolved a gruesome reproductive strategy that transforms the caterpillar into both a living incubator and a loyal bodyguard for its young. The process begins when the female wasp injects her eggs up to 80 of them directly into the caterpillar's body. At first, the caterpillar continues its normal activities, seemingly unaware of the horror growing within. But, as the larvae develop, they begin to influence the caterpillar's behavior. The caterpillar stops eating, becoming lethargic and unable to move far. It effectively becomes a prisoner in its own body entirely at the mercy of its parasitic invaders. The larvae, not content to simply grow within their host they consume it from the inside out. They feed on the caterpillar's body fluids, draining its energy and weakening it over time. When the larvae are ready to leave, they break through the caterpillar's skin in a horrifying display. Yet, the caterpillar does not die immediately. Instead, it remains alive and continues to guard the larvae, protecting them from potential threats as they spin their cocoons nearby. Only after the larvae have fully developed and left does the caterpillar succumb to its nightmarish fate. Western Honeybee Zombies in the hive Bees are essential to our ecosystems, pollinating plants and producing honey that supports life as we know it. But even these industrious creatures are not safe from parasitic invaders. The zombie fly, Apocephalus borealis, targets western honeybees, turning these vital pollinators into lifeless puppets for its reproduction. The attack begins when the female zombie fly lays her eggs in the soft spot between the bee's abdominal segments. The eggs hatch inside the bee's body, and the larvae begin to feed on its internal organs. This gruesome process causes the bee to abandon its hive and its duties. It stops collecting nectar and pollen, and instead, it begins to wander aimlessly, often drawn to light sources like a moth. As the larvae grow, they consume more of the bee's insides, slowly killing it. Finally, the fully developed larvae emerge from the bee's body, often through its head or thorax, leaving behind nothing but a hollow shell. This parasitic invasion not only kills individual bees, but also poses a serious threat to entire colonies, potentially disrupting ecosystems that depend on these pollinators. Wood Cricket Suicide by Parasite Crickets are fascinating insects, 
known for their chirping songs and their ability to adapt to different environments. But for the wood cricket, the greatest danger lies not in predators or environmental challenges, but in the parasitic Gordian worm. This worm is a master manipulator, capable of driving its host to an untimely and tragic death. The Gordian worm begins its life in water, where its larvae are consumed by mosquito larvae. These mosquitoes are then eaten by crickets, allowing the worm to find its way into its final host. Once inside the cricket, the worm grows to an enormous size, filling the insect's body cavity and consuming it, its resources. But the parasite's life cycle requires it to return to the water, and for that, it needs the cricket's help. The worm releases proteins that manipulate the cricket's brain, altering its behavior. The infected cricket becomes compelled to seek out water, even if it has never encountered it before. Once the cricket reaches a body of water, it jumps in, often drowning itself in the process. As the cricket dies, the Gordian worm emerges, completing its development in its aquatic habitat. The cricket, an unwilling participant in this horrifying drama, is left as nothing more than a casualty of the parasite's relentless survival strategy. Cobweb spider, a web of doom, spiders, with their intricate webs and solitary lives, are often viewed with a mix of fear and fascination. However, even these skilled predators can fall victim to parasitic manipulation. The Zadipoda perconatoria wasp has developed a particularly cruel strategy, using spiders to construct the perfect home for its young. The female wasp begins by injecting her egg into the spider's abdomen. As the egg hatches and the larva grows, it feeds on the spider's internal fluids, slowly draining it of nutrients. But the wasp's influence doesn't end there it takes control of the spider's mind, altering its natural behavior. Instead of spinning its usual web, the spider begins to create a special structure designed to protect the wasp's cocoon. This modified web is stronger and more durable than the spider's usual creation, ensuring the wasp larva's safety from predators and harsh weather. Once the web is complete, the larva kills the spider and uses its lifeless body as a foundation for its cocoon. The spider, once a master of its domain, becomes nothing more than a tool in the wasp's ruthless reproductive cycle. American cockroach, a zombie under the emerald spell. Cockroaches are often considered pests, scuttling about in the shadows of our homes. But for the American cockroach, the real nightmare comes in the form of the emerald cockroach wasp. This parasitic wasp transforms the roach into a zombie-like state, using it as a living nursery for its young. The process begins when the wasp injects a paralyzing toxin directly into the roach's central nervous system. This initial sting immobilizes the cockroach, but the true horror is yet to come. The wasp then takes control of the roach by grabbing its antenna and leading it to a burrow. Once there, the wasp lays its eggs inside the roach's body. The cockroach, now in a vegetative state, remains alive but completely helpless. As the wasp larvae hatch, they begin to consume the roach from the inside, feeding on its organs while carefully avoiding vital systems to keep it alive as long as possible. Eventually, the larvae complete their development, killing the roach and emerging to continue the cycle. This gruesome relationship highlights the lengths parasites will go to ensure their offspring's survival. Carpenter Ant, Mind Controlled by Fungi Carpenter ants are known for their ability to chew through wood and create intricate nests, but when they encounter the Ophiocordyceps fungus, their industrious lives are turned into a horrifying tale of mind control and death. This fungus doesn't just infect the ant's body, it takes over its very mind. The infection begins when the ant comes into contact with fungal spores, which attach to its body and penetrate its exoskeleton. Once inside, the fungus releases chemicals that alter the ant's behavior, effectively turning it into a zombie. The ant is compelled to leave its colony and climb to a high, humid location and ideal environment for the fungus to grow. At its final resting place, the ant bites down onto a leaf or twig, locking itself in place. The fungus then kills the ant and begins to grow, eventually sprouting a long stalk from the ant's head. This stalk releases spores into the air, infecting other ants and continuing the cycle. The carpenter ant, once a vibrant member of its colony, 
becomes nothing more than a vessel for the fungus's sinister propagation, 